Hello, my feral friends, and welcome back to my channel. Do I look different? Your girl got some upgrades. <laughs> I have to remember to look at the actual camera lens now because I got a camera. Sweet. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop like freaking out now. Today we're going to be talking all about altars. We're going to be delving into the different types of altars that you can have, how to set up your own altars, what you can do at your altars, and even some guidelines and rules if you want them for your altars. Oh, hello. Can I help you? And at the end, I'm even going to give you guys a little tour of my own personal altars so you can see what I do in my own spaces. <laughs> so grab your cozy drink or beverage of choice and let's get started. Totally not me panic cleaning all of my altars before making this video. <laughs> I feel like a lot of beginners tend to be really intimidated by altars. <sighs> let me let out this dog. Do you need to go outside? Yes? Can you go outside? Okay, let's go. Let's go outside. Come on. It's cold, okay? Go have fun. And off he goes. Oh, not far. <laughs> what? We must quickly record while the dog is outside. <laughs> I feel like a lot of beginners are very intimidated by building their own altar. And I was too at first, especially with the new rise of everyone sharing their practice and their spaces on social media. It's very easy to get caught up in the aesthetic of it all, the need for things to look beautiful or a certain way for them to be good. Kind of this pressure to fit into the witchy aesthetic, right? But in reality, an altar is just a specific place for you to do your working, where you can kind of help get in the mindset of your practice or just create stronger magic in that space. So what is an altar? An altar is any space that you designate for a specific intent. You can have many different altars for different intentions or just one altar that encompasses all of your workings. The idea here is that you're creating a magical sacred place for yourself, which will kind of help boost the magical workings that you create in that space. Some people like to just have one big altar where they do all of their different workings, some people like to have many little altars for different intents and purposes. What you choose to do is entirely up to you and what you want in your practice. So are there any specific rules that you need to follow? If you don't want to, then nope. <laughs> you can do whatever you like with your own space and your own practice. If you don't want to follow certain rules and guidelines, then that's perfectly fine. If you do want to follow rules and guidelines, that's also fine. If you follow a specific tradition like Wicca or certain ceremonial types of magics, then there might be some rules and guidelines that you can follow if you like. And that's perfectly fine and up to you. I find that some people when setting up their first altar really like a little bit of structure and guidelines to help make them feel like they're doing it correctly. The desire to go by the book, so to speak. And that's absolutely okay if you find that some structure will help with your needs. Personally, I find that too much structure in my craft leads to a little bit of analysis paralysis. Kind of by feeding into my perfectionism, I feel like I can't have an altar until it's absolutely perfect or I have all the things that I need to make it perfect. So I'm kind of restricting myself um, monetarily as well as physically. So please learn from my mistakes and don't create just nonsense barriers between you and growing your spiritual practice. Remember that your altar can grow with you. It doesn't have to be perfect at first, right? It can just be as simple as a piece of wood, right? The top of a desk or a top of a dresser. You don't need any actual decorations to begin. And your altar, like yourself, like your practice, like your grimoire, really like all things in your journey can just continue to grow and change with you. So what kinds of things can you put on your altar? Literally anything you want. <laughs> your altar can be filled with whatever you want to use in your practice. Items that are important to you, items that make you feel a certain way, really whatever you think belongs there. And nothing has to stay permanently either. Your altar can be forever changing just as we ourselves and our practices are. Some ideas for what you might want to put on your altar are your actual materials that you use in your practice, whether this be supplies like herbs or crystals or actual tools like an a theme, a wand, 
um, really whatever you use personally. I like to decorate my altar with the seasons, so I often have um, flowers, dried plants from outside, acorns or other seeds um, that I can find and scavenge kind of as I go. I also like to put things on it that I am currently trying to increase my connection with, so to speak, like right now particular tarot decks, some other uh, themes or daggers that I'm looking to use in my practice. I tend to put my consistent workings on my altar as well. If it's like my money bowl, for example, is something that I work frequently. Yeah, really whatever works for you. <laughs> I feel like this whole video is just becoming me saying, do what you want. But that's kind of what it is. Like, do what you want. <laughs> so what kind of altars are there? There are so many kinds of altars. And honestly, the possibilities are endless. So I'll just give you a couple ideas to get your imagination and your creativity flowing. First, we have a working altar. This is a place where you are actively performing spell work and typically includes some space to store your actual materials and tools that you're using in your practice. This often tends to be a large altar um, that you can stand or sit at for long periods of time. There are also ancestor altars. This is a space that you use to connect to and honor the dead. Reverence and typically offerings. Usually this altar is decorated with items that are either from loved ones who have passed or remind you of said loved ones. Like myself, you can also use this space to honor deceased pets, animals that you are close to. And in addition to or instead of using items from people in your family who you might have lost, you can also include items from your cultural heritage to connect with those ancestors that you never personally knew. Next, we have an elemental altar. If you want to deepen your connection to a particular element that you might want to create an altar specifically to honor that element and bring it more into your life. You can face the altar in a direction that corresponds with the element and then maybe fill it with items that remind you or correspond with said element. For a fire altar, you might want to place it in front of a south facing window that gets in lots of sunlight. Fill it with candles, maybe even your favorite hot sauces. I don't know. <laughs> a water altar could be located near your bathtub or shower if you're interested or even near a fish tank. Decorate it with sand, seashells, and bottles of water. An earth altar could house your favorite plants. Maybe a small bowl of soil, some dried leaves and seeds. And an air altar could just be near a fan. <laughs> maybe with an incense holder, a couple feathers, maybe even a little paper airplane. You know, you could do whatever you want. And then there's also deity altars. Many practitioners who work with specific deities will often have a space dedicated to their work with this being. This specific altar might house candles that they light in honor of the deity or where they leave offerings. You can decorate it with imagery or items that remind you of the deity. Many people have statues as well, or even just an art depiction that you created yourself. And the last type that I'm going to be covering in this video is an altar created with specific intent in mind, such as a prosperity altar or a beauty altar. This is very similar to the working altar that I've already mentioned earlier. However, is catered towards doing specific workings of a certain type. For example, you might turn your vanity into a beauty altar and use it to perform glamour magic or spells for self-love. A prosperity altar might be on your work desk, holding your money bowl and maybe charms that you've crafted to help bring you better luck and better financial success. So how do I use my altars? I have one large altar and then several smaller altars throughout my home. I mostly just use my working altar, which stores all of my materials, my tools, the things that I use in my daily practice. It's also kind of like storage for things I don't use every day. <laughs> However, I am trying to get better at using my smaller altars as well on a daily or at least weekly basis. For anyone else out there with ADHD, I definitely struggle a lot with object permanence. Um, I tend to forget about things that are not immediately in front of me or at least that I come across on my daily path. So putting altars in places that I don't commonly frequent causes me to forget about them really, really easily. So I'm in the process of kind of experimenting and maneuvering things around. So I kind of want to take you guys on a little tour, at least of two of my altar spaces to kind of maybe show and inspire you guys to on well, what to do with your own. So come along with me. Ooh. Woohoo, voiceover. So we're gonna start off with the tarot area that I use on Twitch to do my tarot readings. 
this space is just kind of a little altar. It's mostly for intuition. I also have my deck stored here on my desk. And then on the right side of my desk, you can see my little money altar. It includes my money bowl, some prosperity oils that I'm charging. I've got a green candle that I'm going to be charging and using as well during when I do my online content creation. Yeah, so I just kind of have this space set up to bring more prosperity into my life, specifically when I'm working at my desk. Next, we have my main altar or my working altar. It's located next to a giant window in my living room. I love the light it brings in. You can see all of the different objects here. I've got everything from tarot decks I'm charging, artwork I've made, deity statues, even my D&D &D dice you can see there. I also use a lot of themes in my practice. You're seeing those here as well. My altar is currently decorated for Yule. So that is why you're seeing the red and green colors and the red candles. I also have this wheel of the year here on the back that I rotate now with every Sabbath. Yeah, it's just my, my pretty space. You can see some offerings here as well. I did just get that scrying orb I'm really excited to use. There's the coffee offering I used this morning. Yeah, and my Anubis candle there in the center. This is on top of a antique dresser that I was able to get at a local antique shop. I absolutely love it. I use the drawers themselves to store my materials and my supplies that I use. You can kind of see I haven't shut it recently. Now it's shut. <laughs> I love these velvet cloths that I've been using to decorate the altar. They just help me throw in some extra color correspondences for what I'm currently working with. This was with the energies of Yule. And the crystals that are on the altar are correspondent as well. I also have some small protection jars there in the back. But yeah, I, I love my little space. Having it be at standing height makes it really easy to use as well. And that's all for today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this little talk about altars. Even though this video is a little brief, I hope that it was still in depth and good for you. And I hope that you enjoyed me taking you along on a little magical tour of my personal spaces. I really enjoy decorating altars and I'm really happy to begin sharing more of that here with you. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them down in the comments and subscribe if you like it here and want to see more. I wish you the best, my friend. And until I see you next time, stay wild. <sighs> I can't make as ugly faces anymore because you guys will see all of my wrinkles. <laughs> I... What is it? A ghost. You guys can like really see all of my little stuffs now. Great. Great. It's wonderful. And I feel like I keep shifting slightly in like every take. I'm just moving all over this place, guys. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. So offended. I just look so fabulous with this camera. <laughs> Can you guess my star sign? You can't answer if you already know. First video with the new camera. We did it. Recording buddy?